30 seconds. I just see a couple of people are joining, so I'll just give 30 seconds and then I will get going. Uh, but in the meantime, I can briefly introduce myself. Thank you for um, sparing some time on a Saturday to join uh, this conversation. It's going to be quick, fairly quick at my end. I'm going to use less than half of the you know uh, time. Uh, and then, you know, if there are any questions, I can take them. Uh, just briefly about me, um, I'm a computational designer and architect uh, by background. That's uh, uh, my college degree, if you will. Uh, and then I started concentrating on uh, computational design directly after I, you know, became an architect. And that was around like two decades ago. Uh, and what is interesting for me is if I kind of like slowly, you know, start uh, kind of like getting into this presentation. I'm really interested in uh, speaking in very technological terms using computation and AI. The conversation is going to go into AI today, but at the same time remain the concentration focus on human, us, because that's the only thing we have, right? So as a, if you're a designer, if you're a person who is dealing with computation uh, in everyday life, you are the first, you know, the matter subject that you're dealing with. So the question is, okay, we all know that, but how can we bring, you know, the discussion of design and computation into this? And, uh, you know, exploring these ideas and also like working on really like technical sides of things and teaching, uh, I came up with these three questions on the road, right? So this is still like uh, evolving into, uh, let's say the ne next version of itself. And uh, the three questions are, you know, it's they are kind of binary. So we're going to answer those three, and then we're going to connect everything back to design, computation, and human. So the first question is duck or rabbit. The second one is inside or outside, and the third one is part or whole. So this is a, this is a fun exercise for me. The, the duck and rabbit is the obvious, you know, this gestural switch. Uh, you can see objects uh, or things, you know, depending on. Uh, your perception or like cognitive situation. Uh, but it's interesting that the design is always about like seeing this third, third thing, fourth thing, fifth thing, and so on and so forth. So the, the question here is that how much computation is really letting you do so? So here, you know, beyond the duck and rabbit, you can choose the sea crocodile. So this is very much say about design because uh, we pretty much, you know, use ambiguity to come up with new ideas. Uh, the second question, if I can move, really quickly into is, is inside or outside. So this is about human perception. If I ask this question to you, you know, if the dot is inside the closed curve or not, uh, it would just take you, you know, like a split second to give the answer. Uh, the problem on the computational side is uh, it's not that easy, right? So if you want to uh, introduce the concept of being inside or outside in a closed curve, within a closed curve or not, you have to draw these, you know, uh, rays and count the intersections, right? So interestingly, what turns out is that if the number of intersections is odd, like one, three, five, seven, nine, the point is inside. Uh, if you know, if the number is even, it's outside. So this is the this is the algorithm that you use pretty much to solve this problem. But interestingly, what happens is to make the computer see in our terms, you know, uh, you have you kind of like get rid of see. The seeing is diminished, so it's kind of like replaced by counting. So when we talk about today, you know, like about AI and mid journey and so on and so forth, we have to realize that all the system that these things are built upon are, they, they have almost like nothing to do with human perception and then, then the, the way we see things. So this inside outside is about how can we take the concepts of life and, uh, you know, seeing and perception and apply it into computation. And the last one is part and whole, and this is a philosophical question, right? So which humans have been like dealing with uh, for decades. There's an interesting example about this, you know, in the in the book, Zen and the Art of the Motorcycle Maintenance. Uh, so Persek here is talking about walking onto a beach uh, and trying to sort the grains of, uh, you know, grains of sand. So to do so, actually, you can, you know, you can come up with, let's say, this, this kind of techniques of, you know, putting those grains into, let's say, different clusters. So you can sort them by color, by shape, by translucency, by sharpness, and so on and so forth. But there comes a moment where you pick, you know, a sand a piece grain, and then it doesn't fit into any uh, of the formerly uh, defined, let's say, clusters. 
So Persia calls this like analytical knife, right? So you have to kind of split the world into pieces to categorize, analyze, and understand things. So once you get that piece, which doesn't fit into these buckets, you have to go back and, you know, rethink about the way in which you, uh, let's say, cut the world into pieces, right? Uh, or, uh, you know, like, what do you do then, you know, today, actually, in AI, sometimes on data sets, just ignore that, you know, like, because it's like significantly so small, but it's like one single piece. Or you can just kind of like cheat and put it into one of the buckets that you already have. So th this kind of a kind of splitting goes back to also our, you know, own like human bodies or our existence, even the dualism of like, you know, the, the body and the spirit and the soul and, uh, and so on. Uh, as you know, like Descartes had been uh, thinking about for four years. So here the question is, okay, then like where your fingers really end and your palm starts and where your palm really ends and your, you know, like arm starts and so on and so forth. So although we have to study, let's say ourselves, the body, our environments, trees, like in whatever you can think of in parts, just for the sake of analysis and understanding, actually we always need to see it as a, as a holistic system as well, right? So as a, again, like my human body, my hands as I'm moving uh, is actually, uh, you know, um, acting as a whole, although I'm kind of looking at these parts uh, for the sake of analysis. And that like part, part whole thing goes back to like being human, almost all apps, aspects of being human. So when you put these, you know, three questions together, uh, you can discuss about design computation and human, and this is the gist of it, but from here on actually you can expand right so okay if you say like so what you can apply this kind of thinking in practice and teaching so going years back this was 2007 or 8 you know designing this front facade on this building uh, we came up with a smart system in which each panel was smart and you know as it was being generated by by an algorithm every panel was checking neighboring panels to make sure that it's not too similar to the neighboring panels so it would sacrifice itself to be re regenerated right so interestingly these kind of smart systems are of course like they are much more complicated today and you have like many layers of uh these kind of systems but again at the at the end of the day you know you you generate a facade pattern let's say in this case you put it on in front of the architects which he already has their input but they don't like it right so so the human input is always important and we ended up putting some you know like again internal systems for the designers and to, to go and change things. And the way in which we understand data is really interesting too, right? So data, we think it as, as designers or as, you know, the computational specialists, you think that, okay, it exists somewhere. Actually, it, it doesn't exist, data doesn't exist. We look at, a, at something and we put data in there. For instance, in this case, you know, after working on buildings for years or in image processing for a long time, I, you know, started looking into shoes. And here, actually, you're making another sort of reading of data. And here we are reading, let's say, the average pressure under the foot, right? So you are putting that in, intentionally putting data right in there. Uh, and then you can design around that. But at the same time, if you, if you try to understand how you are thinking about data. For instance, we can look into this uh, artwork by Tim Knowles, who, who is an artist from UK. He's, you know, uh, literally kind of like putting a pencil, tying a pencil to a branch and letting the tree make a drawing. And that, that tree makes a drawing, let's say, in, you know, a couple of hours or half an hour. And at the end, you have this thing, which is a plot, uh, which is, well, it's an artwork, right, in a way, but at the same time, you can read this as, as data too. So. This is showing, let's say, the stiffness of the branch, how the wind was blowing, the magnitude of the wind, uh, the duration of the, let's say, uh, the drawing, the experiment, and you know the the type of pencil or ink that you're using, and so on and so forth. So, again, like data, you know, depends on how you are kind of like approaching it and reading it. Uh, and then, of course, they, you know, speaking about uh, data, we have to speak about AI. So interestingly, uh, going back almost 20 years, you know, when I started uh, my master's at MIT, I was interested in making the computer render the images that you would like to see. Does it sound familiar? It's like, you know, I want to see something. Could you make it for me? This was mostly architectural, right? But at the time, I realized that, you know, any meaning that we are trying to understand, let's say here, there's a chair. We have to kind of like, again, cut into pieces, parts, right, for the sake of analysis and introduce it to the computer in that way. So it's like, oh, I want to see these kind of like gradient shade. I want to see these kind of objects here and there and so on. So I, you know, built these alg algorithms to work on this, on this thesis, on this project. 
uh, to arrive at a point I was like, okay, you know, oh, I have some scores, I have some fitness values, I'm doing image processing, I'm doing uh, segmentation and so on and so forth, which are ac actually a part of machine learning, right? Without actually doing machine learning at the time because I didn't have the background, right? So I was kind of like learning and then applying these things, uh, which was an interesting effort. But then 10 years later, again, like working in practice and teaching and dealing with computers, I realized that anything that you do synthetically, let's say mid journey, you can create 1000 images a day. So what, right? So I was doing like buildings and teaching and so on. So I really came back to this notion of being human and trying to, okay, can I compute with watercolor shapes, right? So how can I, the, the computer is just giving me shapes, bits and so on. Can I copy my own bits and, you know, keep, keep drawing with them? And actually I built this system uh, which help you, uh, you know, make paintings, copy, copy your own selves uh, and then build a style, uh, let's say, for what you're painting and drawing. And I was able to talk about this uh, in mathematical terms using shape grammars. Uh, and then, you know, post PhD recovery, you know, I was doing these oil paintings. And then uh, five years ago, I think five year, five plus years ago, machine learning started picking up and I already had these, you know, photograph, let's say a collection of the oil paintings. And I said, okay, I'm going to just feed into this uh, into a machine learning algorithm and see what comes out. So it was an interesting experiment. Uh, to see all these like, you know, synthetic, let's say, uh, paintings emergent, which emerging, which weren't mine, but, uh, you know, it was trying to copy some of the features, recurring features uh, in the paintings, if you will. Then the next step was, okay, what do I do with those, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to make some tectonic forms. And then this kept going for a while, like, you know, without any clear goal. But essentially, if you ask what was happening, uh, this is... Uh, in a way, it was just, you know, helping me generate uh, these clouds. And so that was an interesting experiment. Uh, the, the point there is, I think, again, being so technical and going back to being human uh, and then being a designer, like the way you bridge things is, you know, you lay on the field, let's say across, you look into the clouds and you try to see shapes, right? So you can, you can do that actually by um, using computation too. So that's the interesting thing. And the danger there is with AI and data sets and thinking data is the real thing, right? And then the AI knows the solution. We tend to forget that those are all systems and patterns, systems we put together, which read the patterns we come up with, right? So, but you can also break these patterns. So to conclude, this is, in, this is not a new problem. That's the other thing. So this, this problem existed, uh, I think, for centuries. So if you go back to 1514 to Albert Durer, uh, he made this engraving in which he depicted himself as an angel sitting among the tools of uh, computation and measurement, right? So interestingly, the angel depicted here as Albert Durer uh, is just sitting indifferent, you know, like not, doing, not using the tools of computation and measurement. And interestingly, around the time he said, what is beautiful, I don't know. So it was... It was really interesting. This is the high renaissance. You have all the tools of computation, measurement, data, and so on and so forth. But somebody's kind of like withdrawing that and then trying to, you know, understand uh, the, 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 the meaning of beauty. Uh, that's what I talk about, uh, actually. And Medium Day, you know, when I heard about it, I got super excited and I wanted to submit this talk, which is only scratching the surface. Uh, but again, if you if if you step back, I think there's a lot uh, you know uh, that is helping build these kind of like arguments and thinking and knowledge, and all of that is kind of like uh, existent. Uh, I think in the in the in the writings that I'm doing on media. Uh, the last thing, though, I should say, I think while while again being technical, uh, implementing technology to make designs, you have to remain on the human side because design is something really human. And then I end up seeing that, okay, you can always discover, you can always make and think uh, in these different subjects, which are clustered that design, computation, and human, but at the same time, find ways to uh, combine them. So that's it. This is my 15-minute uh, talk uh, for the 30 minutes, just sparing the rest of the time. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I think for that, 
there's I see like a ask a question button on the right corner uh, that interface is open for me. If there are any questions, again, like I'm happy to take them. If not, this is going to be pretty much it. Perfect. There are no questions as the, you know, the medium, uh, medium day organizers talk. I think it's great to jump back to other sessions, dig into what you're interested in. I already have a bunch of things in my list and I'm going to go check them. Thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate it.